Hi everyone, I'm Jason with Level Up Investing and in this video I'm going to go over Pfizer and Johnson & Johnson as a follow-up video to my previous one and in this video I'm going to talk about why I just picked up 200 shares of Pfizer and 100 shares of Johnson & Johnson. So I'm going to go over the financials as well as some of the key news items that have come out. So if you're new to this channel, thanks for stopping by and checking it out. So recently I did a video on Pfizer and Johnson & Johnson as well as a few other companies that are in a, a, a race, so to speak, to, to find the, uh, the vaccine for the current uh, uh, COVID-19. So I'll put that link up here in the corner there. If you haven't seen that video, you can check that out. Uh, that, that is a review of all the front runners in that race. So after that, I went ahead and I, I did a video specifically on Pfizer and Johnson & Johnson because these two companies are the, out of that group, these are the largest companies. They have the, the biggest global reach uh, when it comes to manufacturing and, and distribution of uh, pharmaceuticals and in this case would be vaccinations. These companies have, have done um, a really good job, I think, of of collaborating with some some strategic partners so I went ahead and did a video on the on what I have as the valuation for these companies and uh, where they are in, in terms of value and stock price so I'll put that link up there as well in the corner so you can check that out um, and you can see what I was thinking of in regards to the uh, the buy price for these for these companies okay so in this video let me go over these two companies specifically the news items and the financials to talk about why I went ahead and purchased some of their shares today. Okay, so there's a couple of key news items recently that uh, that came out. So in this one, Pfizer and BioNTech uh, to supply Canada with their mRNA-based vaccine candidate. In that first video where I talk about the vaccine race, I go over the different types of vaccines that are coming out and and what are the advantages of, of the different types. So Pfizer is one of the companies that's making an mRNA a version of the, of the vaccine. And so this was a, a good piece of info. It says here the supply to be provided over the course of 2021, subject to Health Canada approval. Um, agreement is part of Pfizer's and BioNTech uh, global commitment to help address the pandemic. And it says here that Pfizer and Bio, BioNTech uh, began a phase 2B slash 3 safety and efficacy trial and remain on track to seek regulatory review as early as October 2020 and manufacture global, globally up to 100 million doses by the end of 2020 and approximately 1.3 billion doses by the end of 2021. So that there, therein lies the, the value of them going with an mRNA vaccine that uh, we're seeing the, this p potential for the production of this vaccine and, and having it readily available a lot faster than in anything else that we've seen before when it comes to vaccine development. So this was a big deal uh, with uh, the country of, of Canada um, uh, going ahead and, and uh, making a commitment to, to working with Pfizer on this. Okay, and here is uh, another big piece of news. Uh, just a couple days ago, it says Pfizer and BioNTech score deal to supply 120 million COVID-19 vaccine doses to Japan. It says here the financial terms were not disclosed, but it follows a $1.95 billion contract between the two companies and the U.S. government. Uh, assuming clinical trial success and regulatory approval, they would supply the vaccines in early 2021 ahead of the rescheduled Tokyo Olympics. So a lot of big news there, uh, a lot of uh, ramifications when it comes to to Pfizer and and its uh, again its global reach uh, of manufacturing and distribution. So these were two big pieces of news with two different countries. Uh, that uh, that really exemplifies, uh, I think, um, the the reach that Pfizer has, and what makes it, I think, a uh, a good play when it comes to um, this uh, uh, this development of the vaccine. Okay, and if you've seen my channel before, you'll know that I I like to look at the actual SEC filings. Uh, in this case, the Form 10Q, the quarterly quarterly filing that ended in uh, March 29, 2020. So this is Pfizer's 10Q. 
So the first thing I like to look at is the uh, the income statement and I'm looking first at the top line I can see that year over year there was a, a slight decrease in the in the revenues of uh, approximately one billion dollars in the uh, in the second quarter there and uh, the net income after all that uh, comes out to about a 400 million dollar difference decrease from the year from the year before and then looking further down in the uh, document there you can see the earnings per share per common share diluted uh, had a decrease of uh, seven cents from a year before from 68 cents to 61 and then looking at the cash flow statement the net cash provided by operating activities uh, there's uh, compared to the the quarter from the year before uh, there is the uh, increase in the in the cash uh, net cash from operations and looking at the numbers you could see there that the biggest difference really would be un under other changes in assets and liabilities net of acquisitions and divestitures that uh, there was uh, a lot less um, spending of cash uh, in the net of acquisitions uh, compared to the year before so so that's what made the most difference in the uh, net cash provided by operations so what I'm going to be looking at going back to the income statement is the the uh, the income the net income and the earnings per common share to see how that changes over the course of time especially as the vaccinations start rolling out and uh, and that the uh, that the company takes full advantage of its uh, of its global reach when it comes to that uh, to the vaccinations so it'll be interesting to see what where these uh, EPS the earnings per share uh, where the numbers go from here on out um, and uh, it's also good to remember that Pfizer has been a dividend bearing stock for a very long time and there's uh, and I, I expect that that's going to continue so that's why I went ahead and, and purchased those uh, 200 shares today okay so here's the three-year chart for Pfizer and over the past several months you can see here there's been a couple of these pullbacks here and um, normally uh, in general I will I will uh, work on purchasing uh, stocks of, of companies um, purchasing pieces of companies at a, at a value uh, when the price is much more attractive um, as uh, as I mentioned in the previous video that uh, Pfizer both Pfizer and J&J &J are both selling at a premium um, but uh, there's a reason for that and so I always want to make sure that's why I look at the financials to make sure it's still a, it's a good company uh, and uh, is a dividend bearing company and and there's uh, a lot of upside to the to the company which I believe there is now when you consider the vaccination uh, work that's happening you consider the global manufacturing and distribution and you consider the major uh, investments by the US government so so I think there's a lot of upside with Pfizer and so that's why I went ahead and picked up those shares today okay now looking at Johnson & Johnson or J&J &J, the uh, the the company in addition to the pharmaceuticals and the vaccine that's working on it's always good to remember that the company is very very well diversified in consumer health products so so skin health products you can see some of the names this is straight from their from their website I'm looking at here uh, and looking at some of these names also look, looking at these other regional brands Lubriderm uh, Rogaine you know some of these names are very popular and at the self-care products Tylenol you know like who doesn't have Tylenol in their in their medicine cabinet um, Motrin Zyrtec you've heard of all these names Benadryl and Nicorette for for people that are looking to quit smoking uh, in this case it's a mouth spray but you can see here also things like Imodium uh, Rhinocort, Visine and, and Pepsid, Sudafed very popular names uh, the company has obviously spent um, a lot of money on on marketing, advertising, um, as well as the research and development. And then the essential health products, things like Listerine, Band Aids. Again, who doesn't have these in, in their house? Uh, Johnson and Johnson or Johnson's uh, uh, baby products, of course. Um, I remember using that when I was a kid. And uh, and and yeah, some of these other. Uh, uh, topical treatments and and skin products so always good to remember that 
Johnson Johnson is an extremely well diversified company. This is the uh, the big news that came out today. Johnson and Johnson clinches coronavirus vaccine deal with U.S. government for one billion dollars, uh, one hundred million uh, doses. So, once again, this shows along with Pfizer. This shows that that these are the companies that are getting the most traction. Uh, when it comes to vaccine uh, vaccine development um, because it's a matter of not just creating a vaccine as soon as possible but having the means to manufacture a large amount and to distribute globally so um, that's why the u.s government is is uh, backing some of these uh, companies some more than others and this was the big news from today so so because of that uh, and because of some of the financials, which we'll go over in a second, is the reason why I went ahead and, and picked up 100 shares of, of J&J. Here's some more details from that, from that article. It says that uh, under uh, what happened, J&J said Wednesday that it has entered into an agreement with the U.S. government for large-scale domestic manufacturing and supply of 100 million doses of its vaccine. Um, being developed by its Janssen unit, that's the uh, healthcare and pharmaceutical unit, uh, once it is approved or issued emergency use authorization by the FDA. Uh, and then what's interesting here, to me, the most interesting as an investor is seeing this part. The U.S. government may also purchase incremental doses of the vaccine under a subsequent agreement, J&J said. So, so there, there you go. When it comes to the investment, it's it's not a one shot deal. This is a, something that is a it's going to be going on for for quite some time. Especially if you watch the news uh, about what's happening with infection rates and such. So uh, I think this is going to be a very smart way to to um, to really uh, look into the the vaccine market, the pharmaceutical market, and and that's why I'm I'm going ahead and investing in like I am. Okay, here's the 10Q from Johnson & Johnson, and this is for the quarter ending on June 28th, 2020. And here's the income statement. This is comparing the actual quarter, June 30, 2019, to June 28, 2020, and the uh, diluted earnings per share um, has had a decrease 2.08 last year compared to um, $1.36. Uh, for the net earnings per share in this last quarter, and when you look through the the document here, the Q, the the 10Q, uh, they go over the explanation. They talk about how with COVID-19, there's been a lot less uh, of uh, consumer uh, goods being purchased because of of the financial situations out there. And uh, and so remember, we, we talked about how this is not just a pharmaceutical company, that, but uh, has a, a great deal of consumer products. So this is going to be interesting to see as well once the vaccine does come around and, uh, and to see what the earnings uh, will do at that time. And here is the three-year chart for J&J. &J, and you can see the, the several pullbacks that have happened uh, over the past several several months um, there's the big pullback uh, back in March so uh, I normally uh, again look at uh, companies normally for for a value a value investing um, but uh, um, companies like like this that I think have a lot of upside from the current from the current uh, uh, level uh, in light of the vaccination uh, um, position that they're in, as well as the heavy investment from the U.S. government. Uh, I think there's a lot of upside here, so it'll be interesting to see this chart over the next uh, several months and, and years uh, to see how, how it plays out, uh, especially when you consider the uh, vaccination work they're doing. Okay, so that was a brief uh, review on uh, both Pfizer and J&J, &J, uh, the, the financials as well as the current news items and where these companies are landing when it comes to the vaccine development race. So I hope you like this uh, content. If you do, definitely give a like on the video, uh, share the video to someone who, who might uh, be interested in this type of content, and uh, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can get these types of videos as they come out. And I will see you on the next one.